He's great. He's a great warrior and he fights on our behalf. Amen. And you know, I don't know why, but I'm going to glorify God this morning. I Amen. feel Amen. the presence of God Amen. this Amen. morning. Amen. Let me tell you something, brethren. When you are determined to serve God, that's when you see the enemy come. Hallelujah. Amen. We had an early prayer meeting this morning from 12... Just built out all the electrics in the house went I said okay Lord what do I do I have to get ready for church I had to ring pastor praise the Lord rang brother Lamar brother-in-law told me what to do you see the enemy knows when the Lord is about to bless Amen. and when we go into his territory and when we plead the blood of Jesus and we stand on the word of God which says no weapon formed against you shall prosper, then he's going to come. He's going to try. But this day, this afternoon, it's a day of rejoicing. Amen. It's a day of Amen. baptism. It's a day of renewal. Amen. It's a day of refreshing. And so we are going to come and we're going to glorify God. We're going to thank God for the candidates. You know, the enemies lost them. Ha, ha, ha. And we give God glory and we give God praise because God is still in the business of saving. I'm going to ask, good, sorry, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I got carried away. I'm going to ask Mother Joyce if she can come up and pray for us and open the service because I feel the presence of God this morning and we are going to be blessed. Could I ask you all to stand? Bless Amen. the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Can we give God the glory? Hallelujah. Amen. I can't hear you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Can we glorify God? Hallelujah. Can we glorify the living God? Hallelujah. We come to praise him. Nothing will stop us from praising him this morning. Hallelujah. We come to lift the name of Jesus high. Hallelujah. Amen. Agree with me in prayer. Bless the Lord. Blessed assurance. Hallelujah. Jesus is mine. No, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation and purchase of God and born of his spirit. Hallelujah. And washed in his blood. Our God, this morning we come to praise you. We come to lift the name of Jesus high. Glory to God, hallelujah. We come to tell you that no weapon that is formed against us uh, right. shall prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. We look to you this morning. You are a source of survival. The reason why we are living this life, hallelujah, is because one day we shall be able to see you high and lifted up. Amen. Hallelujah. As Isaiah saw you in his splendor. Glory to God and I, hallelujah. We come to tell you we love you. Mighty God, we thank you. What a privilege this morning to know that we are a part of the family of God. Hallelujah. Thank you for this blessed assurance. Thank you for this Sunday morning. The sun is shining. Amen. And so we pray that you will shine all over us. Hallelujah. We are so privileged that we are alive. I pray today, this morning, that the service will be blessed. Remember the candidates. Amen. Remember the worship leaders. My God, the musician. Hallelujah. The brethren, brothers and sisters. My God, is because of you why we become brothers and sisters in Christ. There was a time my God, when we were, we did not know each other. Oh God, but this morning, hallelujah, we
We thank you for the redemption. Glory be to God. We love you. I pray that this service will be blessed. Glory to God, my Savior. We love and we praise and we thank you. We come to praise you this morning. We will forever praise you. Hallelujah. We magnify your name. Bless this service. Reverend Cox, Sister Cox, the brethren, and whoever is here calling on your name. Hallelujah. We will forever call you. Glory to God, we thank you. Bless us all together. We need the blessing. Hallelujah. Saturate us with your presence. Yes. Marinate us with your love. Glory to God, we thank you. Thank you for the peace that passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and our mind on you. We love you this morning. We thank you. In the name of the Father, hallelujah. In the name of the Son, in the name of the blessed Holy Ghost, we praise you. Shall we praise him? Praise him. Come on, brethren. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. That's all we have. Praise him. Glory to God. We are not in the war. We are here to praise him. Shall we praise him? I need you to praise God with me. Shall we praise him? Bless the Lord. Amen. That's what we've come to do, to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm just going to read um, a scripture. I'm going to ask you all to remain standing for the word of God. And this is Psalms 121. And it says, God, the title says, God is our keeper. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is the shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. 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 So candidates, you're going to look to the hills from whence come if your help. You're going to lift up your eyes unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because we know that the God that we serve his name is also the I am that I am. And we know that he is the great I am. The song that says, I want to be close to your side. So heaven is real and death is alive because he is the great I am. Amen. Amen. So heaven is real and death is a lie. I want to hear voices of angels above singing as one. Hallelujah. Holy, holy God Almighty, the great.
God that you are serving, you can tell them that he is the great I am. Amen. Amen. You know, that is our response, isn't it? There's a song that says that you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life and I'm never going back. And it says that my response is hallelujah. So hallelujah is what? The highest praise. So that's what we're going to do. Hallelujah. My response is, amen. And I'm never going back. Yeah, yeah. You have. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never going back. Say it again, say it again. 
again. You have, you have rescued my life. You have, you have rescued my life. And I never, 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 ever go going back. My response is, my response is, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when the Lord says, follow me, what do we say? My response is, hallelujah. And we say, yes. We say yes to the Lord. You know, someone used to say to me, oh, it's a good thing to serve the Lord. And it is. Because when you are in the will of God, and when you see God's purposes moving in your life, that's all you can say is yes, Lord, isn't it? All you could do is raise your hands and give God thanks. And even when situations aren't going as you will want, you still say yes, Lord, and you still give God thanks. There's a song that says, hands up, hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high, we lift you high. Amen. Again, this is a decoration. This is a decoration that we're singing to God. Regardless what, Lord, we still lift you high. Amen. Hallelujah. Why does we cry? God. 
He's worthy to be glorified. He's worthy to be honored. The song was saying that our hands are lifted high. Our hearts are lifted. And we give him all the praise and glory. And I know that there are some here today, you may not be familiar with this form of worship. But we encourage you because as I often say, it's what we're going to be doing in heaven. We're going to be giving God praise. And we're going to be giving him glory and we're going to be giving him honor. It's going to be coming like a fountain. Amen. Our praise and our glory and the honor unto God. And so today we say, Father, we thank you. Thank you for bringing us into your presence. Thank you for life and strength and health and well-being. Father, today we thank you that we have candidates to baptize. We thank you that there are people still professing Jesus Christ Amen. as their Lord and Savior. And so today as we worship you, today as we praise and magnify your name, we are praying that you will receive all glory and all honor. And Lord, we're looking forward to the fact that there may be some who did not make a decision before coming. But today as they hear the word and as they hear the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they will make a decision to follow you and to yield their lives to you. And so it is our desire that you are glorified. Father, we are committed to focusing our attention on you and on you alone. And Father, as we bring our offerings, as we return our tithes, as the word is brought forth today, it is all an offering to you. Father, inspire the speaker. Anoint him, Lord. Hallelujah. We come against every distraction that may want to come. And Lord, we proclaim that your word will not return <coughs> void. And so, holy God, do what only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. You may be seated. Praise God. We are grateful to God for all that he is doing in our lives. We are in Central Baptist Church today, and uh, I must apologize, we were unable to gain access at the time that we would normally gain access, so we're running a little bit behind time, but I just want to give God thanks, and I want to thank all of those who set up and made the effort to try and get us going as quickly as possible, and uh, as somebody said to me today, it's just a reminder, we just need our own place. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we just need to say it out, but we need to go for it. We need our own place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I welcome all of those who've come today, uh, and particular welcome to our Reverend Stephen Jarrett from the NTCG Church in Hendon, Northwest London. Uh, and although seven months have elapsed, seven and a half months, it still seems strange saying NTGZ, NTCG Hendon, because as many of you will know, he is a son of NTCG Luton, but he was initially a son from Hendon, so he's returned home to pastor in Hendon, and we're really glad to have him and his daughters with us. Can you stand with Leah and Kayla? Just stand, please. And Reverend Jarrett has a particular interest in this baptism because two of the candidates came to Christ through his ministry. And we're so grateful to God that Amen. Amen. they are here. And he's here to see them be baptized. And that's really 
great news. So thank God. So you see, even though he's left the church in Luton, he's still ministering on behalf of Luton. Keep doing that, sir. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, I welcome Bishop Gooden and Sister Gooden. Would you mind standing, please, both of you? This is Bishop Gooden and Sister Gooden. We're so grateful to God to have them as a part of this fellowship. And um, we're just proud because everybody's trying to pull Bishop Gooden all over the place. But this is home, isn't it, Bishop Gooden? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So you may not have seen Bishop Gooden many times over the summer, and that's because he's been preaching, as I said to him, all over the nation. Um, you know that building society nationwide? <laughs> that's what Bishop Gooden is doing. He's been nationwide. Um, but we are thanking God that, you know, we're a church that can send people out and he's blessing many congregations. And today, he will be bringing the word. So he's been preaching elsewhere. Now he's going to preach at home. So praise God. And I'm thanking God for the candidates and all those that you've brought to come and see you get baptized. I know you're itching to go, but just, just keep cool. Just keep calm. It's coming. It's coming. Praise God. And so we are going to be returning our tithes and collecting our offerings. And straight after that, Ava will come uh, to bring the announcements. Uh, Grace isn't here, is she? So it's just Ava today. Um, so can we just stand together, please? Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you that you have blessed us. You've given us life, you've given us strength, you've given us health, and you've given us well-being. Father, you said that you are the God who gives us strength to make wealth. And so you are the one who's provided for us. You are the one who's made the way for us to earn. And Father, today we are returning our tithe and giving our offerings unto you as an act of worship. And so, Lord, bless us, we pray. Bless us to be a blessing. Father, we thank you that you have returned all that the canker worm and the caterpillar uh, and the locust has stolen and you have blessed us to be a blessing, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Father, we declare that we are a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The ushers will direct you when to come as Sister Sharon and the worship team lead us. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Giving this part of worship, isn't it? Amen. Giving this part of worship. And we have victory. Is that right? We are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb, and He has given us victory. So this afternoon, we're going to declare victory is mine. So it's mine, it's yours, it's all of us. Victory in Jesus is mine.
brethren who who supported and took part in the NTCG Hitchin week of meetings seek me find me there is more thank you to pastor Sis, pastor Cox and Bishop Gooden for bringing the word thank you to the music and worship ministry brother Antonio brother John Jonathan sister Shelley Ann sister Madison sister Sade sister Sharon sister Jillian and sister Mara who sister Amara who took part Thank you to all the brethren who supported during the week. We are praying for you. You are blessed to be a blessing. God is in control. Calling all young people. Yes, that means you. We are planning for our youth weekend from the 24th to the 20 from to the 24th from the 24th to the 26th of November 2023 and we want you to get involved. We, we will be meeting at church every Wednesday from 5 till 7. We will be having sessions on cooking, music, songs, writing, dancing, music production, and play. Luton Street Outreach on Saturday the 21st of October from 12.30 to 3 p.m. at St. George's Square. Our harvest service on Sunday the 29th of October 2023 will be at St. Paul's Church at 1 p.m. The Women in Business Seminar will be on Wednesday the 25th of October at St. Paul's Church at 7.30 p.m. All women are invited to attend. International Evening Bring a Dish on Friday the 10th of November at 7.30 p.m. Everyone is welcome to attend. There will be prizes for the best dressed costume. Please fill in the name of the dish of what you will be bringing on the night on the sheet of paper displayed at the back of the church. Luton Street Outreach on Tuesday the 31st of October from 5.30 to 7 p.m. at St. George's Square. Fundraising Rally and Harvest Festival. Fundraising Rally will be on Saturday the 21st of October from at 6 p.m. Doors will open at 5.30 p.m. Refreshments will be on sale. 
Harvest Festival Sunday, 22nd of October at 11 a.m. Birthdays we have, um, we have Anella White. Um, Anella White. Um, Callum. <laughs> Callum. <laughs> Caroline Taylor. Maria Elliott. Praise God. I, I just want to stress a couple of things. First of all, the fundraising rally is next week, Saturday. It is at St. Albans. And we want to support St. Albans. Uh, just like we've been supporting Hitchin, we want to support St. Albans. And may I just say, uh, that I'm just so pleased that each night of the Hitchin week of meetings, there was good representation from Luton. And that's a really good thing. And I just want to celebrate with you and thank you for all the support, the support of those who sang on the teams, played on the teams, and those who just went along and supported. And we would like to support St. Albans in the same way. And so let us come together and make a good effort to come and support St. Albans. And uh, also, just to say that the, the international evening, please see Sister Doreen. I know everything isn't quite ready, but Sister Doreen's at the back with her. Raise your hands again, please. Sister Doreen's there. And she needs to know what you're bringing, who's cooking the ackee, who's cooking the chicken, who's cooking what? Dumpling. Dumpling. Yeah. Manish water. Uh, it's international. Yeah. Foo foo. It's international, so we, we need to know that. And very importantly, we only just mentioned it, but we have Harvest Sunday in two weeks. Now, here in Luton, the food banks are really struggling. They have received great demand, and we know there's a cost of living and so on. And as a church, each year we normally collect a harvest, and we split it between people in our community, and the food bank. So please, as far as possible, it's non-perishable that we need. So don't bring a loaf of bread, for example, because that's going to perish too quickly, but bring tins and things that have a long sell-by date. Please do not bring things that the sell-by date runs out in the next few days. So please, support the harvest service. It's on Sunday the 29th. Sister Maureen will manage that for us. She's agreed to do it again for us. And Sister Maureen actually makes the, the deliveries as well. So um, it's really important that we show support to our community because so many people are struggling. So we don't want to just preach, but we need to do other things. And this is one of the things that we do. Praise God. May I just ask us all to stand, please? Bishop Gooden, can you come and join me? Praise God. And so, Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you for the message that you have given him for us. Father, I pray that our hearts will be upturned to you and that we will receive what has been dished out to us today. Lord, I pray that hearts will be changed and minds will conform to you. Lord, I pray that those who don't know you will yield and say, yes, Lord, today is the day that I come to you. And Father, I pray that you will continue to anoint your son from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, that he will be obedient to your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless the Lord.
Good afternoon, everyone. What a blessing to be in the house of the Lord today again. And I want to greet you, Reverend Cox and Sister Cox and Pastor Jared. Good to see you, sir. I've not seen you for quite a while. And it's good to be at home again. I, uh, as Pastor said, I've been traveling a great deal since June. And I uh, have to say that um, I think I might be traveling for the rest of the year. So, but this is my home. Amen? This is my home. And for those of you who know that I was writing the book, it will be launched on the 28th of this month. It will be launched at uh, the last church that I pastored in West Croydon. They want me back with it. They're having a special event, and uh, I will be there. Thereafter, I will um, make sure that you have your copies here. Candidates, what a pleasure to be with you today. Today is your day. Nobody else is your day. Your day. Before I, 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 I speak to you, um, this, this whole chorus, uh, Sister, Sister Donner uh, and Pastor Cox would have grown up on this. Sister Gooden and some of you all would have grown up on this. Can I have G? There's no keyboard. I wish I had a keyboard player. Can somebody get me a keyboard player? Because the one here run off. It could be G. It could be G. Try it. Try that. Get higher, one pitch up further. Why not talk it over again? Why not talk it over again? Just carry your cares to Jesus, tell him everything. Oh, why not talk it over again? Please stand now. Say, why not talk it? Over again, why not talk it over again? Just carry your care to Jesus and tell you everything. Oh, why not talk it over again? Sing it, yeah. why not talk it over again? together. Give God a praise. Come on. Amen. 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 Please take your seats. I'll be speaking to you from the book of Acts. The book of Acts was written by St. Luke and uh, he, it seemed as though that Luke had so much to say to the church, and he was specially anointed in a special way. And so, uh, the book of Acts, he wrote, all the other books from Matthew through to Revelation finished with Amen. But the book of Acts has no Amen. It has, I could put it, that, that, that at the end, which means you have to go and live out the book of Acts. The book of Acts is a very, very deep spiritual book, I might call it. All the books are spiritual, but I just 
emphasized because that was where the uh, disciples received the Holy Ghost. And to tell you how powerful the book of Acts is, is, is that uh, I remember years ago uh, while I was in Jamaica, we had a lady, this was in Kingston, she was coming from church and in the night after service finished, she were heading home and she was stopped by a thief uh, to steal what she had in her bag. And uh, he said, give me what is in your bag, in your, uh, well, we said purse or wallet, in your bag. And she said, I don't have anything. He said, yes, you do have something in your bag and you got to give it me right now, otherwise I'll kill you. She reached into her bag, she pulled out a little New Testament, rammed it straight in its face, and, <laughs> and said, in the name of Jesus. While he stood there, he, she said, Acts 2, 28. He dropped his revolver and ran off. Others asked him, what's wrong with you? Why he looks so scared? He said, the lady stopped me down by the road. I was trying to rob her. And she said she had two ox and a 38 revolver. <laughs> what he heard was she had two ox and a 38. I'm telling you, this is more than a 38. Because when this shoots you, you drop for good. This brings change in our lives. And I want to talk to you about a man in the Bible. And I'm coming from the book of Acts chapter 8, verses 29 to 38. And so the scripture that she mentioned, Acts 2, 38, it's in your Bible and you can read it at your own convenience and see what it said. But I'm going to talk to you about two persons, a eunuch and Philip. Some sections of the scriptures are really difficult to understand. So my theme to you is, do you understand what you are reading? Or according to the scripture, understandeth what thou readest. Understandeth what thou readest. That's what the scripture said. So there are two very important persons uh, that uh, have been connected to this chapter. And let us see who they, they are. Philip and an Ethiopian eunuch. Now, Philip, he was an evangelist, also a deacon in the early church. Uh, he was one of the seven deacons chosen by the apostles to care for the poor, uh, poor Christian community in Jerusalem. He preached and repeatedly performed miracles in Samaria. He also met and baptized an Ethiopian eunuch. Uh, baptizing him, he, he, he was one of those persons who had an eager and a thirst for God. I understand that through his baptism, we have the Ethiopian church begin movement. This uh, text itself relates to Philip, uh, Philip's mission from Jerusalem to Gaza. And uh, here we have the, the he, he was very, very, very anointed. Very anointed because he was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost in Acts 2. Where the Holy Ghost was poured out upon a group of believers. And uh, when they received the Holy Ghost, it was nice all over Jerusalem as uh, they were told to go to Jerusalem and tarry together in one accord, in one place. And Philip was in that group and received an extraordinary anointing because God wanted to use Philip in an extraordinary way. And so he went from there with a special anointing. So that's Philip. Now the eunuch, the eunuch has no name mentioned in the scripture. Eunuch were men who was castrated in order to, uh, for them to be trusted in, in overseeing the king's or the queen's position. 
or the realm. They were also uh, employed as personal attendant uh, and helpers to the king or the queen. Uh, they were bodyguards. They, were, they do all kind of stuff. And in fact, uh, Esther's preparation to meet the king was done by eunuchs. Uh, each of them were specially, specially prepared. And some were married, some were not married. But this uh, particular eunuch was a black person. Black people are all over the Bible, whether you can see them naturally or not. They're all over there. Simon of Cyrene, who helped Jesus carry the cross, was a black person. So let us look on mission to Gaza. Gaza, Gaza is known as the Gaza Strip. Gaza Strip, rather. And it's a desert place from Jerusalem to Ethiopia. The Queen of Sheba, that married King Solomon, traveled this route many, many times. So beginning at verse 26 of the chapter, I'm going to read, and you follow me, please. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south into the way goeth down to Jerusalem and to Gaza, Gaza, which is desert. Verse 27. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority and the Candace queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem to worship. This was a very important person. The eunuch was far from home, but he was permitted to become a God-fearer. He was very concerned about his spiritual life to have traveled miles and miles from Jerusalem to worship. From Jerusalem to uh, Yes, uh, is 47 miles. But since the war of 2007, it is now 42 miles because of security. Routes have been changed. From Jerusalem to Ethiopia is 1,500 miles. Back in those days, it would have been a very long journey for a chariot to travel. But now he seemed to be living in Jerusalem. This was a very important gentleman having responsibility to oversee the queen's treasure. These treasures always involve things like gold and silver and other precious commodities for the queen. He has uh, to be trusted and would not, as I mentioned earlier, have a wife or in some cases they do have wives but they adopt children because they were incarcerated. He took time out of his busy schedule to worship. Now here we come. Sometimes this is where we think we are too busy. I've been working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Sunday is the only time I have, so I can't go to church. We are so busy doing what we're doing that Sunday becomes the day when we have to do church homework. Go about shopping and all the rest of it. So no time for church. We're all right in the week, but Sunday we are sick. Everything is all right in the week. Doesn't matter how our head hurts. Doesn't matter where the pains are. Sunday morning we are sick. But for the rest of the week, we go to, to work. This man decided to go to Gaza for his service. And a part of the business that he had to get on with the queen's business, there was something in him that needed worship. In spite of everything, it took time out. So verse 28 tells us, after gone worship, he is now going home. So was returning and sitting in his chariot 
reading from the book of Isaiah, the prophet. He was reading from the book of Isaiah. He might have stopped under a tree because it would have been very, very hot. His journey was long. So he stopped maybe under a tree to just reflect while the temperature cooled down a bit. As he sat there, God had a plan for somebody else to have a talk with him. He was reading. And I don't know if what he was reading about was what the preaching was about in the service. Maybe it was just that he was just reading. And maybe the scripture was puzzling him all the time. But here he sat there and was reading. Now come back to Philip. The man who had received the anointing on the day of Pentecost. He was moved by the anointing to be in the appropriate area at the appropriate time. How many of you know that it is good to be where God wants to be at the right time? And sometimes you are someplace and you wonder, what am I doing here? You never know what God wants you to do right there. And as he was there, the Spirit said unto him, Philip, go near and join yourself to the chariot. This is a part that really touches my heart. Verse 30. And Philip ran thither. No oh Lord help me here. Philip didn't question. He ran. Here is a call. Go quickly. Somebody need your help. He didn't question. And it's good when the Holy Spirit can speak into our heart. Let me say one, one more thing. One of the reasons why I wrote that book is to express to everybody as much as possible the miracles that God can do and still do. When you read that book, it will blow your mind. I'm not plugging it. I'm just telling you what you will come up on. And some things will blow your mind when you read the book. I'm telling you, God still speaks to people. He still works miracles. He's a miracle worker. God doesn't work by time, just work today and just go home and tired. God doesn't get tired because he did too much yesterday. God doesn't get tired because he overslept. God doesn't get tired because you bother him too much. You can call him anytime, 24-7. He's always there and his spirit is always at work. Go near it's good when you have a here to listen and understand when the Spirit of God is speaking to you and not your mind. And go near and heard him read from the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest. That is the theme. Understandest thou what thou readest. The eunuch was reading the scripture loudly. And I have to say to you that one of the great things, if you can, read your scripture loudly. If, if you read scripture loudly, it makes a lot of difference. So what, what was happening here? As he was reading, Philip got near him and asked him the question. Do you understand? So I tell you, until this day, Philip would ask me the same question because it's not everything in the scripture that I understand. Sometimes it's very difficult to understand some scripture. The reason why we understand is because the Spirit of God that is within us enlightens us. That's how we get to understand because the scripture is very deep. And sometimes you got to realize you cannot just take one verse of scripture and get the answer. You might have to read a few and reference them. Then you get what it's all about. Are you with me? And so, 
Do you understand what you're reading? And uh, verse 31, and he said, how can I? Except some man should guide me. So he desired Philip. He said, okay, come up and sit with me in the chariot. Do you understand scriptures? Because scriptures, you don't understand it because you're intelligent. You do not understand scripture because you're educated. You do not understand scripture because you read a lot. Scriptures are a very spiritual thing that deals with spiritual things, though some natural but spiritual things. Scriptures are meant to deal with our inner man. And it doesn't matter if you're a professor of whatever it is, a doctor of whatever it is. It takes more than that to understand scriptures. So the man was not a fool. He was in charge of the queen's possession, dealing with gold and silver and other things. But he could not understand the scripture that he was reading. It takes quite a lot to understand sometimes and sometimes you read and it doesn't make sense. And thank God for those who have helped us to understand uh, the scripture in a wider way by referencing and all the rest of it. Amen. So, so these are very important things to know. So the, 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 the new international version read like this, says it like this. Then, then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked him. Here he answered. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Verse 32, then the place of the scripture which uh, he was uh, reading, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and lamb like, uh, uh, and like a lamb uh, done before his share. So openeth he not his mouth. In verse 32, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare this generation, for his life is taken from the earth. This was Isaiah chapter 53, verses 6 through to 7. That's what he was reading and could not understand. Yes, Jesus was about, Jesus was very much Moving around in the spirit, if you understand. He wasn't on earth. He was now in heaven. But the disciples had a commission to go and preach. So he was living in that era where he would have heard about Jesus Christ. But not fully understood. It's not all things about Jesus it's easy to understand. Until this day, some folks questioned the death of Jesus Christ, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. How could he, how could a natural man suffer so much and still alive? How could he be ascended to heaven? A priest told me once, he said, Norman, believe it or not, I don't think and I could not believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. Because he was offered as a sacrifice. How can I accept that blood to cover me? I say, he's a priest. Shame at you. Give up the church and go home, I said. You're in the wrong place doing the wrong business. For you're destroying the very message that you're preaching. Philip was under the anointing and was on spot to deal with a situation. And sometimes we need to be on a spot to deal with situations. Don't be asking questions. Help somebody. Oh. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture 
and preach unto him Jesus. The same scripture. He did not take out another scripture. He used the same scripture that the gentleman could not understand. And say, ah, this is what you're reading. Verse 36. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. I'm coming down to it. And the eunuch said, come on, here, <laughs> see his water. What doth hinder me from being baptized? All right. He must have gone through very detailed to the eunuch. Telling him about Jesus Christ, his birth, his death, his resurrection, and the redemptive package that is in Jesus Christ. He must have dealt with him in some very deep, um, deep way. And the eunuch was very touched. Time was not going. And as they rode along, he said, Philip, you, you remember what you were telling me about? Jesus and baptism. Philip said yes. He said well here is some water. Do you think that there is anything that would prevent me from being baptized? Philip said alright. It's a good question. He commanded the chariot to stand, to stand. And they went down into the water and baptized. But here what's happened. Verse 37. Philip ministered to the man in a salvation way. Philip said, if, come on candidates, if thou believest with all thine heart. Is there anything that you think would prevent me from being baptized? Well, if, if you believe, not just believe, with all your heart, are you with me? We're not taking you into church. This is not Write your name in the church book. This is a personal conviction between you and God. Not you and the church with you and God. If you believe, not partially, with all your heart. Because we can believe, but not with all our heart. That is the condition that was a condition that Philip laid out to him. Now, and, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Here we are, church. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, then you may be baptized. He didn't need anything more. What he did, he did an open confession and Jesus Christ in your life is not a private thing. Some folks don't want to talk about God. They said it's a private thing. Salvation is not a private thing. It's not between you and God. It's not something to receive and stocked away. He said if you declare that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, then you can be baptized. Is anybody here believe? Is anybody here believe? All right. I'm coming this home. Do you believe that Jesus is your Lord? Do you believe that God is living within your life? Do you believe that your sins have been forgiven? Do you believe that you're in walking with God? If you believe, then you are ready for baptism. But you have to make that confession. Like I said, it's not a private thing. Some folks like to say, oh, I'm, I'm a Christian, but it's a private thing to me. I don't want anybody to know. Come on. You got to talk about it. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Talk about it. 
it does not take a whole week to receive salvation before you can be baptized. It doesn't take a whole month. I tell you this. When I go to India for, for crusades, uh, we have a four days convention. You're dealing with four or five thousand people under the tent. Four days running. The last day, we're going down to the river for baptism. I'm telling you the queue. These are Hindu people that change. And you see with, with, the, with the Hindu folks, unless the baptizer don't believe that they receive Jesus, we will be in the church and people begging us to be baptized. They, we have to take them to the river immediately and baptize them publicly, declaring to the community, I am no more in the Hindu religion. I am a born again Christian. It's not a private thing. Talk about it. Be proud of it. What you have is what the world is seeking. If what you have, the world have it, we wouldn't have this war going on between Jerusalem and the Arabs. God bless you for taking this step. Don't hide it. Let me come down here and stop. Because what you're going to be having today is when pastor goes in the pool, he is going to use a word, a sentence, a formula. So when Jesus was going back to heaven, he gave a formula to the church. The disciples, he said, he said in Matthew 28, 19, come on, he says, go ye therefore. Uh -huh. Teach all nations. Teach all nations. I want you to know, beloved, we don't have a black church or a white church or an Asian church. It's one church. Teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. That's the formula that we're going to use in this water here. A lady in Germany, she belonged to a, what we call in England, Jesus only church. She said to her pastor, I would like to be baptized, but I want to be baptized only in the name of Jesus. The pastor said, no problem. I'll, I, I'll baptize you, no problem. They got in the water. And pastor says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. <laughs> it has to be in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you cannot cut out some for your own convenience. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Stand with me, please. Candidate, we want to congratulate you. But let me give you a word of warning. Be encouraged on your journey. I'm in this from I was 13 years old. If there's anything on your journey, and I'm, and I'm telling you, for 40 years of, as a pastor, before I retired, when I got baptized, it was, third, it was 60 of us. My wife was in that group. 60 of us in the sun hut in Jamaica in a pool outside. Those days they baptized the ladies before the men. So when we got there, my water was dirty. They baptized the older ones before the younger ones. So when, the time I got there, you want to see my water. But I had to go through with it. I had to go through because there's 60 persons going through the same water into a little pool. But here I am. So let me say to you, if you are in struggle, call your pastor.
talk to your pastor. I'm sick and tired of baptizing people and don't see them again at church. I'm sick and tired of it. You got to find if you get this far, God is able to take you through. Don't baptize and just gone. This is a good church. Good leadership. Good worship. Good music. Good. You want to be here. Again, let me tell you, you're not coming into a Jamaican church. You're not coming into a black church. You're coming into the church that Jesus Christ died for. Don't worry yourself. Come and receive Jesus. Receive the baptism. If you're in trouble, call pastor. Call pastor's wife. If you cannot get them, they are very qualified people. Very qualified people that pastor set up ready to talk to you. Ready to pray with you. Don't walk away. Sometimes the enemy wants to use things to distract you and you forget about your baptism. Listen, this is only beginning. Your journey ahead is great. God knows what some of you are going to be. Little daughter, little daughter, young man, mother, son, you never know what God wants you to go be. You are in this for a reason, not to play. God calls you at the special time of your life for a reason. Don't waste it. You might never get another chance. Woo! Glory! Let me finish by telling you don't remain as a spiritual baby for the rest of your life. Babies have to grow up. Babies have to grow up and make room for other babies. Mommy's breast have to get itself back together and get more milk because more baby coming so we can't feed you and the breast all the time you got to grow because another little baby coming don't be screaming say oh they didn't call me only worry when you cannot hear from Jesus you have your God given right to take up your Bible, read it. What you cannot understand, the pastor, I'm reading, but I can't understand. Sister Donna, I'm reading, but I can't understand. Sister Donna will work it out for you. Pastor Will, they are here to help you. As I'm going to hand back the, back the mic to Pastor. You are here today. You're not a Christian. Let me tell you. Don't waste your time. The world is paused for a change. I don't care what life you are in. I don't care. Your, your mouth could full of gold teeth from left to right. God wants you. He cannot save you. I don't care what you're in. God said, come and this is your day. It's getting very scary even to walk on the streets. You never know. So, I want to pray for anybody who oh, here, before you go home, I'm going to give the mic over. I want to pray for you if you're not a Christian. Come quickly. The eunuch was going to church but he fell short. He wasn't very happy because church wasn't meeting his need. He realized he needed Jesus. Come on. You need Jesus. I want to pray for anybody. Pastor, please make your way up. I love to me but I long to rise in their arms and and be 
clothes are drawn to thee. Raise your hands with me. Draw me near, 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 blessed Lord. Make that commitment. Draw, draw me near, yeah, near, oh, near. Thank you, Jesus, to thy flesh. Just, just one more time, that goes. Draw me, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer, nearer. Jesus, to thy precious bleed. I'm just going to pray a very quick prayer. If you need any special prayer, raise your hand just where you are. Raise your hands where you are. If you need any special prayer, I'm going to hand the mic over. To the cross. Father in heaven, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We thank you. For the awesomeness of your presence we thank you for these wonderful candidates we thank you for everybody here today thank you for the visitors thank you for family members who came along to give support we just bless you father as we're in this house today anyone that has not yet made it right with you i pray right now that you'll touch that heart that as they leave here today they will go pondering and wonder is there anything stopping me from being baptized is there anything stopping me from re receiving you as lord and savior father we call it done in your name and the people say amen 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 good afternoon everybody you you may be seated at this time we're going to invite our baptismal candidates to just share why they would like to be baptized today and just to share a bit about what god has been doing in their lives so can i ask um Brother Anthony to come first. Bless you, sir. Afternoon. I'm not a big talker, so I'll keep it short. I'd like to thank my family and friends for coming today. But most of all, I'd like to thank the Lord for this journey, for bringing me here today. Thank you. Oh, can we ask the family of Anthony to stand? And just, we just want to greet you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Bless you, welcome. Sharon, would you like to join us over here? Just going to invite you to share a bit about your journey. Good afternoon to church, to Pastor Cox and his beautiful wife. I'd like to thank you for my beautiful outfit. Um, I was born a Catholic, grew up in a Catholic household. Um, went to church every Sunday, but really didn't understand and know really much about God. We moved to Luton um, seven years ago, and then Last year, October, we moved to Dunstable, where we found our church um, with Pastor Cox and his wife. And we're learning more and more about Jesus and also Pastor Stevens. Um, he's been giving us Bible lessons, and we've been learning bit by bit, slowly, but we are learning so this is a, um, a new journey for us. 
Anthony's my husband, so we're both on the same road, same path. Because there is many husband and wife, one's going church, one's going party. So I'm just happy that me and Anthony were on the same road at the same time. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Can I invite your family just to stand one more time so we can just acknowledge you? Just stand together. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Brother Shay? I don't know how to start mine. Um, from a child, I was abused um, by my mum's boyfriend. And Christ was there for me the whole way through that. I was brought up by my nan. Um, and she was, she was Catholic, but she did believe. Um, of course. Um, my parents weren't always there for me as a child. Um, but my nan was, and Christ was always there for me. I was bullied at school, in both primary school and secondary school. When my nan moved me from one secondary school to another, I had an English teacher called Judith Jones Nugent. She took me under her wing, and she gave me my first Bible. And it was a very hard time for me then because my nan passed away with cancer and she was the only one I had to look up to. Um, but dad wasn't really much of a dad to me. He didn't bring me up the way I see Pastor Cox with Jonathan and, and his son, his other son. Um, so I'm learning quite a bit from Pastor Cox and his family. Um, Last year, I fell into same-sex attractions, which I'm absolutely ashamed of. I've said it numerous times. I call it disgusting. And Pastor Cox kind of laughs at me using that word. Um, but I came, I came back to Luton this year, and through a tragic event of a block of flats being caught on fire... It actually brought me to this wonderful family, and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for all of you. Um, and I'm learning, as I say, I'm learning quite a bit. And I'm so grateful, and I love you all so much. Thank you very much. Bless you. Brethren, those who are here to support Shane, can we just stand and show him our love? Love of God. Hallelujah. We stand with you, brother. We stand with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Glory to your name. Amen. Amen. Jada, do you want to come? Come on. It's okay. So growing up in the church, uh, my grandma, my mom, my granddad, my aunties, my uncles, they taught me all about God. I remember being in Sunday school and um, we used to do colouring and we used to always go over like, sometimes we tell like stories about how wonderful God is and we always used to, we always used to make sure that we always understood what God was and I wanted to make sure that if I, that when today that I'm getting baptised, that I give my heart to God and I give my God to Jesus Christ and I just, I want to give thanks to God for saving me because God has saved me from a path that I never should have took. Brethren, can we stand with Sister Jada? Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to invite Sister Sarai to come and share. Um, I'm a bit nervous, by the way. Um, I've grown up in a Christian household. Um, but in the past two years, I've kind of been going down the wrong path that a lot of my family didn't know about. 
And I want to give all the glory and all the praise to the Father because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> I just want to say sorry to Father, first of all, and sorry to you, and sorry to Mum. I'm praying that the Lord forgives me. I'm very grateful to be here and I'm very excited for this journey. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just give another round of applause to God for our baptismal candidates? People who are making a commitment today to, to live the rest of their life for the glory of God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to hand over to the worship team. Praise the Lord. Ooh. Praise the Lord. You know, <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm a bit emotional now with all of those testimonies of what God is doing and what God has done. And so, you know, we're just going to sing glory and praise to him. And, you know, it's a party time. It's a party time right now, you know, for rejoicing. And so, you know, as our candidates are immersed, we're going to sing the songs that they have requested. Amen. So, I'm going to start off with the first song, which is Brother Anthony, I believe. The blessing. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. The Lord you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. I give God thanks for Anthony. Uh, that's a bit concerning that my voice was so loud without the mic being on, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, and, you know, Anthony told us beforehand, you know, I'm not much of a speaker. But we are grateful that Anthony has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his savior. And Anthony, look around. I know your fat. Family and friends who've come to support Anthony, can you stand? Because I, I know family stood, but I know there are friends here as well. So family and friends, you've come to support Anthony, Anthony and Sharon. Can you just stand so that he can see you? There's a lady waving at the back as well. And then Reverend Jarrett, who's been instrumental in your journey. Can you see everyone? Is everyone, the children there as well? Yeah, wave, wave. He needs to know you're here. <laughs> Praise God. Can you tell us your full name, please? Anthony Chase. Praise God. And uh, we discovered that we're fellow Beardians. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Well, we thank God for you, Anthony. 
And we always ask this question, how far do you intend to go with the Lord? All the way. Amen. 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 Praise God. And you can reassure the others that the water's nice, isn't it? Freezing. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. It is nice. Praise God. And so by the authority vested in me as a minister in the church of God, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you. give God thanks for this young man. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's come mm. a long way in a short time. Amen. It was just a couple of months ago that I had a phone call from Tajwe, Namara, and Yamani. And they said, Pastor, there's a fire. People are climbing out of windows. And can we open the church building to look after people? And I went down to see what was going on, and the police were there. And I said to them, would you like us to open the church to help out? And they said, oh, yes, please. And as soon as I said that, there was this voice saying, would you like some help? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I think my immediate response was, well, let's just see what's happening first. And then as I realized that, yes, they were going to decant everybody from the, the two blocks of flats, uh, and in fact, one of our members, as we dis discovered, lives in that block. D would you like to stand, please? So we have a lot to give God thanks for. And uh, we decanted everyone, uh, I think it was over 100 flats, um, into the church. And this young man was helping us. Amen. Volunteering. Can I get this? Can I move this? Can I? Yes. And we got to know him. We were talking. I think we were at church for four or five hours. And uh, he also started to get to know Taj Wayne. And it's such a privilege that Taj Wayne could be in the pool today Amen. to help to baptize Shane. I would say this about Shane. He has a really teachable spirit. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I said, he's come a long way in a short time. Amen. And there's a lot for him to learn, and there's been a lot for him to learn, and he's learning, and God is using him. Amen. And so I ask you, what is your full name? Shane Greaves. Praise God. Shane, how far do you intend to go with the Lord? There's no other way. All the way. All the way. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. And so, by the authority given to us by the church of God, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. You have rescued my life. Praise the Lord. Now, this young lady has a special affinity with me. <laughs> so, uh, my family, we came to this church in Luton in August 2015. Our first Sunday was the 2nd of August 2015. And um, I think it may have been that very day that her mum came and said, Pastor Cox, can you dedicate my baby? She will be a year in September. And so the baby dedication was planned for the very first week in September. And you're about a year old. So Jada was my first baby dedication in Luton. And I now have the privilege of baptizing her. Amen. And I don't know how long any of us will live, but it makes me wonder if I'll get a chance to do her wedding. And yes. do her wedding. Amen. <laughs> we, we don't know how long the Lord will, before he returns, but I consider this a privilege. And Jada's been wanting to get baptized for a long time. And, but as you know, in, in this church, we are careful to make sure that everyone, young or old, understands. And so we've waited until we knew that Jada understands. She's a precocious young lady. Get to talk to her afterwards. It's like talking to somebody who's 56. Yes. <laughs> Good parenting. <laughs> but we thank God for Jada. Amen. And so can you tell us your full name, please? Jada Maya Williams. Would, would you like to say that, but a little bit slower? Jada Maya Williams. Praise God. That's three names in there, by the way. <laughs> How far do you intend to go with the Lord, Jada? All the way and beyond. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Felt a bit of Buzz Lightyear in there, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Praise God. And so by the authority vested in us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. said regarding Jada, her mum took her out of the pool, her grandma was here, her great-grandma, great-grandma, where are you? <laughs> She's looking around. She's over here. Mother Millie, just stand up for us, please. So <laughs> this is Jada, <laughs> Jada Jada's great-grandma, where's mum? Mum's in, in with her, where's great-grand, where's grand? And there's Gran, look, there's Gran. And then there's Uncle over there. Wave, Uncle. Hey, I, I said to him, we're ready for you. We've got outfits. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, the, the ladies of this church are really good. We did an inventory, and uh, we have spare white clothes for anyone today. You may not have come prepared to get baptized, but when we did the inventory, we've got up to... 4XXXX. So it doesn't matter how small you are or how large you are. We are prepared for you. We've got things for men as well. And so if you're here and you may not have come prepared to baptize, but you've accepted Jesus Christ. You recognize your need. You heard the preacher today. Then make yourself known. In fact, make yourself known to the preacher. He's standing just over my right-hand side, just let him know, or let my wife know who's standing over here, that beautiful lady. Oh, hallelujah. Um, I won't get distracted. Uh, but either let her know or Bishop Gooden, and they will talk to you just to make sure that you know what baptism is all about. And, but we're prepared. We've got towels and everything, so we're, we're ready for you. So, friends and family of Sharon, you're here. That's right. Stand again. Amen. Wonderful. Wave at Sharon. Praise God. That's right. Hallelujah. And you've got a special friend here, haven't you? A friend who, who was a friend who led you both, and where is Margaret. she? Margaret. 
Ah, that's it, right. So this is a wonderful day for Margaret, seeing Anthony and Sharon getting baptized today. And so can you tell us your full name? Sharon Chase. Praise God. Her husband is looking on with a beautiful smile. He, they wanted to see each other get baptized, and we, we're so happy to in, enable that today. And so, by the authority vested in us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's face, and sin as much beneath the blood moves all the guilty sins, moves all the guilty sins, moves all the guilty sins, and sin has come beneath the blood, moves all the guilty sins, there is a fountain, there is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's grave, and sin has brought me the blood, moves all the guilty sins, moves all the guilty sins, moves all the guilty sins, and sin has brought me the blood, moves all the guilty sins, moves all, moves all, moves all the guilty sins, moves all the guilty sins, and sin has brought me the blood, moves all the guilty sins, moves all, moves all, moves all the guilty sins, moves all the guilty sins, and sin has brought me the blood, moves all the guilty sins. Praise God. Can you sense the excitement over on my left? Praise God. Again, I, as I spoke to Gary when he called me, I said, I really feel privileged. Now, it's amazing how God brings people into your life. Uh, he brought Des into our life through Sherelle. And then Des brought Gary into our lives. And uh, I, I'll let you into what my wife says to me about you and about Des. It's wonderful when men just worship. There, there's something about a worshiping man. Amen. Amen. Every church needs men who will worship. Unabashed, unashamed. Last week in our service, Gary came and he just worshiped. He brought his daughter, Sarai. And he brought the Garden of Eden. <laughs> he said he knew who I was talking about. <laughs> and then, I think it was the following day, I received a message from Des. Gary needs to talk to you. And when we were able to speak, I think it was Tuesday. And then Gary told me that his daughter, 
Sarai would love to get baptized. Amen. I... And today I met Grandma, Kathy. So Granny, would you like to stand? <laughs> so Granny is here. Mummy and Daddy are here over on your left. Eden is here. Lyndon. Which? Ah. Uh. <laughs> and you know what? I greeted him earlier, not knowing who he was. So I'm wonderful having you, Lyndon. And then you brought your friends. Yep. Friends, <laughs> would you like to stand, please? The friends you brought. Look, look around. Good parents. Ah. Wonderful. Praise God. And then we discovered that I knew one of the godparents. <laughs> God is so good. And as we, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Tell your friends. <laughs> now is the time. You know, on a, on a very serious note, the message that you heard today, now is the time. And I'm struck by the fact that the Ethiopian eunuch, he, he wasn't prepared for baptism. He was just reading scripture. But after he heard the good news of Jesus Christ, his question was, what's to stop me? And there are those of you today, you heard that message. It came clear. It came strong. What's to stop you? It's not the clothes. I've just told you we've got spare clothes. So that's not the reason. The water is ready. Sarai has told you it's warm. That's why we're standing here talking so long. If it was cold, she'd be like. <laughs> and Sarai has given her testimony of how she met Jesus and she knew how her life was going. Shane knew how his life was going. But Jesus Christ has changed that all. Amen. Can you tell us your full name, please? Sarai Faith Smith. Do you hear the middle name? <laughs> faith. Ah, so there's a lot of faith in the family. Mm -hmm. Praise God. You married Faith. Praise God. <laughs> You're going to have lots of support in your family. Is this lady your auntie? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I saw the joy on her face as well. So you're going to have a lot of support in your family. You can have support from us too. Amen. Oh, didn't ask you. How far do you intend to go with the Lord? Till my lungs give out. Never. <laughs> I'm never going to stop. <laughs> I think in all my years, I've never heard that one. Fred, yeah, I, I think that is. Uh, I've been doing baptism for decades. I, I have never heard. Fred, it's a good one, isn't it, Bishop Gooden? Amen. By the authority vested in us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Take me to the King, I don't have much to bring, my heart
And so, as we always do, is there one? Is there somebody today? You heard the message of Jesus Christ. It has impacted you. You recognize your need for Jesus Christ. You recognize that you are a sinner in need of a savior. We are ready and we're ready to receive you. God, just to let you know that so far, we have another two, possibly three. We're just waiting. And so we're saying thank you, Jesus. And, and you know what? The Lord is touching the male of the species. So we give God thanks. And so we have a gentleman here. We have Tommy. Um, Tommy's with, is that mum? Tommy's with mum right now. So we are just getting some clothes. Hallelujah. And uh, we will baptize them in the name of the Lord. Um, praise God. Praise God. Lift Jesus higher, a little higher. From the self to eternity. He said the fire be lifted up from the self.
Praise the Lord. Well, we give God thanks. Amen. And I know that uh, this is Tommy. Wonderful. This is Tommy. And Tommy literally, as far as I understand, just gave his heart to the Lord. And look at mum. That's how you should be. Amen. And Tommy is Sarai's cousin. So there's going to be a lot of celebrating in the Smith household. Um, what's mum's name? Sam. Sam. All right. So, Tommy, just tell us your full name. Tommy Markey. <laughs> Say that again. I like that. Tommy Markey. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. So, Grandma? Your grandma as well? No, not to, oh, okay, okay. Ah, oh, right, okay. So, you got your family here? Amen. Who else is here for you? My family. Where? Wow, praise God. Praise God. So, I understand, I've been told you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so, how far do you intend to go with the Lord? All the way. And even more. Amen. 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 Praise God. And so upon the confession of your faith, and by the authority vested in us, it is our delight to baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born. household as blessed as the Smith yeah. household today. This is Eden. Eden was the name given to where God's presence resided. We're praying that God will always lead and direct you, and that you will hear and you will obey. I know that this is a, an overwhelming time for you. I saw Eden from the pool look to his dad. And his dad spoke with him. His dad is a, a man of God who just loves God. And I know your dad counsels you. Amen. And I know Bishop Gooden, I think. Where is Bishop Gooden? 
I know Bishop Gooden spoke with you. And so we are confident that you know what you're doing and that you've placed your trust in Jesus. Amen. How old are you, Eden? Eight. Eight years old. Praise God. And so we thank God for you. Can you tell us your full name? Eden Asher Smith. Amen. Hallelujah. So we've got the presence and we've got a tribe. Hallelujah. And you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And so upon the confession of your faith, Eden, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. I am blessed, I am blessed, every day of my life I am blessed, when I wake up in the morning and I lay my head to rest, every day of my life I am blessed, I am blessed.
Praise the Lord. We are thanking God. We have another candidate who's come in. And uh, we are just so grateful to God. I'm asking those of you, please don't leave. We still have to give the baptismal candidates their certificates. Uh, and I know, I think Ruth will need to, where is Ruth? Oh, Ruth. Ruth will need to get names. So for those who have just been baptized, um, so that's Tommy. Tommy, can you make yourself known? To, Ruth is just walking around the back. She needs to know your name. And there's, I think Eden is still getting changed. Yeah, we need to sing. Of the goodness of God. You're experiencing the goodness, aren't you? First thing I need to let you know is that after Andrew, we have another candidate. So we give God thanks. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So this is Andrew, and Bishop Gooden has alerted me to the fact that Andrew just needs to share his testimony. And so we'll let you do that now, Andrew. I uh, recognize my sin, and I need uh, redemption. And uh, I call upon Jesus Christ, my Savior. Uh, my baptism today. Thank you. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank God for the public confession. And so please tell us your full name. My name is Andrew James Powlett. Praise God. Thank God for you, Andrew. And how far do you intend to go with the Lord? All the way. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so, by the authority given to us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after with my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness, Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. I surrender. 
to let you into, uh, I'm not sure if it's a secret, but we initially had six candidates. And then this morning I heard that one of them wasn't going to be able to make it, and that took us to five. And as I was preparing this morning, I just felt like the Lord said to me, take ten envelopes. Amen. And I thought, okay, I'll take ten envelopes. And there's a, a book that we would normally give out, but I only had eight copies. And I said, okay, Lord, I'd still take the take 10 envelopes. And if I'm counting correctly, mm -hmm. so we had five original candidates. Mm -hmm. And then we had Tommy, mm -hmm. Amen. Eden, Amen. Andrew. Amen. There's a young lady coming. Amen. And so I think we're missing one. I think we're missing one. And so I pray that the Holy Spirit, who is speaking, you will hear his voice and you will not refuse. It is the Holy Spirit who convinces, the Holy Spirit who convicts, and the Holy Spirit who converts. And so I'm just trusting God. I counted out 10 envelopes and I brought them. And I'm just trusting God. We've got the, the baptism book, so that's got lots of pages. That's not a problem. But you're here today and you know you should be saying yes to Jesus. And that you should be getting baptized. God. 
Please tell us your name. Shawnee. Please tell us your uh, full name. Acres. Uh, Shawnee Acres. <laughs> <laughs> praise God. I understand you guys want to watch what we're doing. Okay. So praise God. We we have Charlie and she already. Oh, Shawnee. Sorry. And she goes to our church in Wilsden. Amen. 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 <laughs> praise God. Um, we feel honored and privileged to be able to baptize you today. You came to support, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. So would you like to tell the people who you came to support? Anthony and Sharon. <laughs> and now look at Anthony and Sharon. <laughs> when, when Sharon saw you walking down, you should have seen the rejoicing that took place. So, Shani, you confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yes, I do. Amen. And so, how far do you intend to go with the Lord? All the way. Amen. And so, upon the confession of your faith, if you just hands over your nostrils. Yeah. Upon the confession of your faith, we now baptize you in the name of the Father. In the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. I won't go back, I can't go back to the way it used to be before.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I, I'm not limiting the Lord, so I may have only brought 10 envelopes, but I'm not saying 10 and that's it. But I'm thanking God. And you know, Tommy's mom looked at me, she said, you've got your 10. <laughs> Praise God. Can you tell us your name, please? Uh, Jabez. Jabiaz. All right, can you tell us your full name, please? Jarkamali Alexander Darrell Beaz Prosper. Right. I was not expecting that. <laughs> can you just tell us one more time? Because I wasn't expecting that. Go. Jai Darrell. Well, I forgot. <laughs> Jai Darrell Kamali Alexander Beaz Prosper. Praise God. Praise God. And do you confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yes. And how far do you intend to go with the Lord? Forever. Forever. Amen. I'm getting some new ones today. Praise God. And I know that you came, you came to support Sarai, was it? Tommy. All right. Okay. So you came with Tommy. Okay. Praise God. And now Tommy is there. Look, look at Tommy. Tommy is waiting for you. And I take it that now means you now have a Bible study partner, a prayer partner. Yeah? Always be in the word of the Lord. And I was saying earlier to Taj Wayne, this is Taj Wayne, I was saying it's amazing. We've been in the pool over an hour, and it's still warm. It, the, there's, the Lord is doing something. And maybe the fact that it's still warm means that there's somebody else. I'm not greedy. I'm just trusting God. And so upon the confession of your faith and the authority given to us, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name.
God. So I'm just checking before we come out of the pool. Is there someone here you know you should be baptized? Thank you, Jesus. In a moment, Tajwain is going to pray. And we will make our way slowly out of the pool. If you're here and you know that you should make the Lord Jesus Christ your Savior and that you should be baptized, either come and speak to Bishop Gooden or speak to my wife. Thank you, Jesus. We'll invite Taj just to come forward. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, you deserve the glory. You deserve the praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin to become sin for each and every one of us in this room. Father, we thank you for your grace, for your mercy towards us, O oh God. Father, you've been so good to us, O oh God. Father, you said that it is not your will that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, for, Lord, those who have been created in your image, O oh God, who took this step. Father, to confess your Son, Jesus Christ, as Lord to repent of their sins and to be baptized in your name. Father, we thank you for their lives. Father, I pray for your hedge of protection around each of them. Oh God, Lord, I pray that you'll keep them from the evil one. For Lord Jesus, you said in this world we will have trouble, but that we must take heart for you, Lord, have overcome the world. And so, Father, I pray, Lord, that you will increase their understanding. Lord, in regards to your ways, Father, open up your word to them, O oh God, that they may behold wondrous things in your law. Father, I pray, Lord, even for the infilling of the Spirit, Father God, yes, Lord, anoint them, O oh God, set them apart for your work, O oh God, that they may bear witness of who you are in this earth. And so, Father, we just bless you today. Father, we thank you for each of us here today, O oh God. Father, we thank you for this day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we will continue to thank you, Lord God. And we thank you for those, Lord, whom the, the word has impacted, O oh God. Father, we thank you for the seed that has been sown in their hearts, O oh God. Father, we pray that you'll water it, O oh God, and that you will give increase in due time, O oh God. Father, we thank you for your goodness. And Lord, we pray that New Testament Church of God will be a light in this town of Luton. Father, I pray that as the name of Jesus Christ is lifted up, that you will draw all men unto you, O oh God, for your glory, God, for we are living in the end times, O oh God. How, how we need you, God. Lord, we can't live without you, Lord. We need you every day. And we thank you that Jesus Christ died for our sins so that we could have eternal life. We bless you and we love you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Many people say amen. Amen. What a wonderful name it is. Christ my King What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is 
None of us perhaps expected to be here at this time, but we just need to just do one last thing. And after we do this last thing, I'm going to ask our Reverend Stephen Jarrett to close this baptismal service in prayer and pronounce the benediction. And so I want to thank Ruth for assisting me today. And I'm calling her by her proper name, Ruth. I, for those of you who know, I normally call her <laughs> Root. <laughs> uh, come, Root. Praise God. So, Donna. I need to find some of these, don't I? Is that why you're calling? Okay. So, the ones that I know that I've already signed, we've got Sarai. Would you like to come? This is. And there's a, a book in here and your certificate. Would you like to take the certificate out so your friends can see? And there's a book on how to live for Jesus. Oh, they they want to take pictures. They want to take pictures. And Sarai, this is that's for you as well. It's good to be a teenager, isn't it? <laughs> Praise God. And we have Sharon. Sister Sharon, we thank God for your life. Sarai, we thank God for your life. And we praise God for you. And we're praying for you. And we pray that as you pray, God will direct your paths. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Sister Sharon, we thank God for your life. We thank God that he never makes mistakes. He is the God of intention, direction, and anointing. And we pray that as you have continued on the journey, God will reveal himself to you with clarity and with understanding. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He is with you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God bless you. God bless you abundantly, woman of God. Thank you, Jesus. Give her a hand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I, I really love God because God reveals himself to us. And he really shows us that he loves us. He really loves us. Thank you, Lord. Jada. Ah, Jada. You can give her a hand. Praise God. <laughs> we thank God for you. We thank God for keeping you and for directing you and for blessing you. And Jada is very, very, very bright. Very bright, very astute, and on a Sunday she'll go, I won't tell you what she says to me. Praise the Lord, that's between me and Jada. <laughs> but we thank God for her life, and, you know, a little one will lead them. Don't ever think that they're too young, because God is speaking to them and directing them and guiding them. Please give her another hand. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. 
Brother Shane. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I, I remember when we met that day and um, God really led us to open the church and, you know, we were making teas and coffees because people couldn't get into their homes. And like Pastor said, Shane was just there at every step. Can I help? Can I do this? Can I do that? And it was really God directed. At the time when we met Shane, we didn't know what God was doing, but God was really doing a new thing in your life and he's continued to do it. And in every step that you take, trust God. Put God first and do not lean onto your own understanding. And you have our full support. We thank God for your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. That's our pleasure. Bless you. Brother Anthony, would you like to come forward? You are blessed to be a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. God continues to go before you. And anything you don't understand, because I, do, I don't understand everything, but I ask God to help me to understand. And there may be things that you don't understand, but don't ever feel overwhelmed. Just go to God. And we're here to support you. We'll, you know, help to answer any questions that you have. But the times when you can't reach us, just ask God to open up your understanding. He will do that. He, God, he, God translates our thoughts. There are things that we think, and then the next 10 minutes, somebody will come to you and, and give you something or phone you, and you're thinking, but I just thought that. That's God. That's God. That's the power of the God that we serve. So I thank you for taking this step of obedience because so much, so much of it depends on our obedience and our listening to God. So I thank God for you. And I thank God for you. We're going to support you. And we praise God for your lives. And we thank God for the gift of life. Every day that we wake up, we are gifted with life. It's a blessing. So continue to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6 and lead, says, Lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And that means in everything. When you get up in the morning, acknowledge that it's God. When you have a meal in the evening, acknowledge that it's God. When you walk down the road, acknowledge that it's God. He shall direct your path. And the thing is, God doesn't go back on his promises. He said he will do it, and he will do it. So we thank God for you. God bless you, man of God. Praise the Lord. Our pleasure. Sorry, yes, I may want to be a bit quicker. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Andrew James Parlot. Okay, so he's not here. We'll keep that for him. Jai. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We really thank God for you. And I, I believe the Lord's got great things in store for you. I really believe that. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to be praying for you. And we thank God for speaking to you. Just be obedient to what the Lord says. Remember, it's not, I don't know how old you are, like 15, and it's not about our age. God will use any of us as long as we learn to lean on the Lord. So we thank God that you've taken this step and we're praying for you, Jai. You can give him another hand. Thank you. Shanai. Can you come forward, please? Praise the Lord. Sorry, Shani. <laughs> Shani. Excuse me. Shani, can we give her a big hand, please? Thank you, Lord. We thank God that God is never mistaken. He knew the step you would take today. And he knew everything would be fine. He sorted everything out. Hallelujah. So we're praying for you. We, we thank God for you. We thank God that you are born again, woman of God. And we pray that you will impact those that you come into contact with, that they will want to know why you are different and that you'll be able to share your testimony. We love you. We thank God for you. We're praying for you. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 And Margaret. Yeah, Margaret, who helped Sharon and Anthony out, is her mama. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can we put our hands together for Margaret? Brethren, you know what? I have to be quick, but this is a real testimony because I had 
a swimming hat in my bag from the last baptism and I hadn't taken it out. We needed a swimming cap today. Oh my, thank you, Holy Spirit. I can't go into every detail about that, but God said, you've got the swimming cap in your bag, go and get it. And Margaret said, now you need to put it back because of the next one. So I put it back there, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Tommy, oh, praise God, Tommy. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Tommy. We thank God for you, Tommy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Lord wants to do a new work in your life. As you trust him, he will speak to you and direct you. And we pray that you will be a leader, not a follower, a leader and a trailblazer in your town. Others will look to you. That's that. If you, your mama, your, she'll tell you what that is. Thank you, Lord. And it's, it's, Believe God's report for your life. In Jesus' name, we're praying for you, Tommy. Eden. Ah, oh, Eden. Bless the name of the Lord. Let's put our hands together for Eden. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Eden, it's, it's lovely to have you. We thank God for the step you have taken. How old is he? He's A. Oh, he's so cute. And we bless the name of the Lord for you. God is with you and God goes before you and God will continue to keep you and we are praying for you and we will continue to support you and your parents will support you. Please put your hands together again for Eden. I was nine when I got baptised. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to be rounding off the service now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, as Pastor Cox comes back. Praise God. You've done a lot of steps today, honey. <laughs> Praise, the Lord. Praise God. So thank you all for coming. Our Reverend Stephen Jarrett is going to come now and he's, he's going to um, pray and pronounce a benediction. Sister Maureen has prepared some light refreshments. I know some of you, you might be a little, you know, peckish before dinner. Um, so please, if you come this way and there's a room on your right, just grab something and, uh, and enjoy it. So, Reverend Jarrett, please close us. Hallelujah. I'm overjoyed to be here today. God truly moved by his spirit. And he's going to continue to do a wonderful work in this church in the name of Jesus. Why don't you just bow your heads with me as we close. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this day that you have given to us to be partakers of what you have orchestrated. Many have not realized they came into this house today and they would leave saved and baptized. But through the power and the work of your Holy Spirit, you have given the word and the word has gone forth. And we thank you that your word will be the transformation in each and every one of their lives. I pray, God, as they go in your precious name, that they will grow from faith to faith and that their journey be sweet with you. No wonder the scriptures tell us to taste and see that you are good. Your mercies endure forever. So right now, as we're about to close, I thank you for your living word, which declares and tells us. Now unto him that is able to do the exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think, according to the power that worketh within us, be unto him glory to the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen and amen. God bless you.